option too. Cool. So just continue with uh, breaking yeah. time? Okay. Yeah, basically we break it up into eight and a bit minutes. Okay. And that way there's a break between it so that Aaron doesn't just cut it off halfway through a sentence. Yeah. Because <laughs> if we just keep the tape rolling, he cuts it off wherever nine minutes is, halfway through a yeah. sentence. Oh. <laughs> so if I can remember to keep watching the, cu uh, the counter, yeah. then we can break it up. And then in here, this one. Ah, uh, we've got the engineer gobies. Engineer. Uh, engineer gobies, and in the tube, it's kind of hard to see. We actually have a moray eel in there. In this tank? Yep. A uh, little chain link moray eel, which is actually one of my favorite morays. Oh, so cute! Oh, cute. Do you uh, remember guys? that little moray we caught yeah. down in Dominican? Yeah. He was like a quarter the size. Oh, really? He yeah. was so cute. Yeah. Now your chain link morays are actually they're one of my favorite. I had one for the better part of ten years, and he was phenomenal. Uh, they're very easy to keep. Uh, oh, the, uh, the gobies were like, oh, hey, who are you? Um, they're very easy to keep. They don't get very large. They'll max out about 28 inches long. Uh, yeah. I actually, I used to keep mine for the longest time in just like a 10-gallon tank, no problem. Uh, feeding, they'll eat almost anything. So I used to throw in, uh, you know, live gu uh, feeder guppies, ghost shrimp, goldfish, um, and it actually used to eat better than me because when my mom would bring home uh, shrimp, uh, like tiger shrimp and, and the shrimp rings, oh, yeah. I used to just grab a piece and feed, it, and feed them that. So. Yeah, we feed a yeah. lot of <laughs> cocktail <laughs> shrimp. How big do they get, though? Uh, about 28 inches long, so not as wow. large as some of your other species. Yeah, but, but yeah. yeah. Like some more eels get big enough to rip your hand off. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Ron. Well, Captain Ron's got the scourge to prove it. Uh, he had the fish all sleepy time with uh, quinala. It starts with quinal. It's uh, a tranquilizer uh, drug that you got to have a license to put uh, oh, yeah. fish to sleep with, but it doesn't hurt them or anything. Yeah. He thought he had it asleep, and he was trying to stuff it in the bag, yeah. and it decided to rip God. his hand apart for $28,000 <laughs> worth of surgery. Oh, marvelous. Yeah, he's an American, so you, it's not like in yeah. Canada where the $28,000 in surgery means Free. government pays for it. <laughs> well, we pay for it in our taxes, trust yeah. me. We pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the chain link Morays are they they you can train them so easily like it got to the point where my guy would only eat out of my hand and I would just hold the shrimp there and he would just come right out of his cave, grab it, go back, eat for a while, put another one in and just all the time. And I have bite? No. No. No, not at all. Well, Dr. Young has the snowflake and when I clean the tank, he zigzags back and forth between my fingers yep. and then takes a little nibble. Yep. Just to check to make sure. Make sure, oh, yep. Yeah. And then the other guys in there, those are engineer gobies. Um, are they also called eel gobies? Yep. Okay. Also called eel gobies. And the cool thing about that, if you want to see something that changes color uh, through maturity, those guys do. When they get larger, they will actually get almost a full black base, and then they will actually have just little yellow stripes, like intermittent yellow stripes all across the body. I always oh, describe do? it like camouflage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder why do they call the engineer gobies? Uh, what they do, they'll actually, in a reef tank, uh, or amongst rock work, they'll actually dig tunnels. So they'll have their own little tunnels throughout the uh, throughout your rock work and such. So you'll see them, they'll pop up uh, in one cave here, and then a couple minutes later, he'll pop up in another cave here. Oh, that's yeah. fine. You just got to make sure that when you're piling the rock, you pile the rock on the glass. Yep. Yeah. You don't just put it on top of the sand, because no. you're going to yeah. have a rock slide. Okay. And in here. Ah uh, yes, down here we have a couple, a couple little fish here. Uh, we've got a little a blue and red guy at the back is a chalk basslet. He's actually, uh, I guess you could say he's kind of related to like your royal grandmas and such. Yeah, the same family. Yeah. Uh, then after up front there, just on the gravel, is our pink spot goby. Oh, I didn't even see him. Yeah. <laughs> And he's uh, the Watchman gobies are actually one of my favorite fish. I'm a big when it comes to marines. I'm actually a big a big invert guy, and so I, I love them because they form a symbiosis with a, a shrimp called a pistol shrimp. And what happens is the pistol shrimp is actually blind or nearsighted. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, what he'll do, the pistol shrimp will actually dig a burrow and uh, you know set up a nice one, kind of like how the engineer goby does. And because the shrimp cannot really see around you know for any predators, the goby moves in with the shrimp and will actually guard the uh, you know the cave mouth. So when the shrimp is doing its work, he's keeping a lookout for predators. Uh, he'll also collect uh, you know little bits of food here and there for him. And they're really cool to see, you know, two different, you know, crustacean and a fish forming a bond together to live. You'll, well, you'll often see the shrimp has its antennae touching the fish. Yep, always. That way, if the enough. fish jumps, the shrimp knows it right away. Yep. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. 
cute? The ocean's a dangerous place. Oh, yes. <laughs> you need well, well, all the friends you, know, you can get. But you see, it's, it's kind of like, like now we are we're on, on land. Exactly. Uh, so many different cultures, so yeah. many different things going on. And somehow, here oh, we're in Canada, living in such a beautiful, beautiful country that uh, it's still you know, little here and there, but I wish every thing on earth could be the same one as one giant like utopia. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then Anyhow, down here. Which one is uh, yes. this one? The, uh, the honeycomb grouper. Uh, they are uh, obviously uh, being a grouper. They are predatory. They're kind of like a saltwater bass, I guess you could say. Uh, yeah. You know, you throw in small fish, they'll, they'll take care of that. Uh, they, you know, they'll eat that. Uh, as you can see, it gets its like it, it gets its name from the pattern on the body. It has kind of like a honeycomb pattern all across. Uh, they're not one of the largest groupers. They'll usually get about you know like uh, between 14 and 18 inches long. But you know that's still big enough to eat any small. But you know like that looks like the stonefish. Remember like the stonefish? Yeah, it's camouflage. It's camouflage as well. I thought it was a stonefish. Oh yeah. Yeah, baby stonefish. Well, but I was looking at it, but it wasn't wide enough. Okay. The stonefish are usually broader. Yeah. Well, look at with this one here. This is a beautiful lobster. Uh, yes. Different kind of color. What is the name again? Uh, it's called a blue reef lobster. Blue reef. Uh, or a spiny blue reef lobster, sorry. Uh, and yeah, those guys, they'll usually just, uh, they're very secretive, so a lot of the times he'll actually hide the feather duster. So, you guys are lucky today. He's actually out looking around and, you know, just chilling outside, but you'll only see, you'll, you'll, you'll usually only see his antennas in there. Ah, and you know one that thing I learned really a long cool. time ago? Never put anyone in with a tridacna clam. Exactly. They will <laughs> run so fast to try to eat that clam. Mussels, scallops, anything yeah. like that. They, oh yeah, they love it more than anything. Wow. Look at him, the baby horseshoe. Yep, we've got a couple Oh, they're so cute. Them. Oh, look at those. Those are the go uh, gobies too, right? Yep, we've those got are the a, mandarin gobies. Like mandarin gobies in there and a couple horseshoe crabs in there. Oh. Horseshoe crabs were around during the time of the dinosaurs. Oh, I yeah. love them. They're so nice. And their blood is copper based. Yeah. And if you've ever had an intravenous uh, in North America, you owe your life to a horseshoe crab. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Right. <laughs> well, because their blood has something in it that if there's any bacteria in the intravenous solution, their blood will coagulate in a ball around it and they can tell right away whether the uh, intravenous solution is infected with any bacteria because you don't want to be given bacteria in an intravenous solution because yeah. you're going to kill everybody. So they're, they put a little bit of their blood in, shake her up. If there's no balls, it's good. Wow. If there's balls, throw that batch out and uh, yeah. they catch them and drain the blood and put them back in the ocean and... Uh, yeah, they're so cute. But these are feather dusters here. Yeah. Yep. Feather dusters, which are actually, there are two born. And uh, the, the little dusters you see there is actually their, uh, their mouth. Like, like their mouth is in the center and then the, uh, the feathers are actually what they use to catch food with. Yeah, it's all the... I know, I kind of like yeah. them, but all like the only... Micro, you know, microcilia covering the surface and they're wafting everything towards their mouth exactly. and then if a predator rips that head off they regrow that yeah and a if lot of times as you can see they've got a, a little tube there which they actually make themselves uh, almost like a little silk tube i guess you could say and, if they, like yeah. a and okay. if they lose that tube they yeah. can make another one just you make just make sure one. you yeah. put them into a protected spot so nobody can chew them up before they get a new tube yeah, yeah. Look at this uh, clams here. Uh, red. These are yeah. scallops. Oh, scallops. Yep. <laughs> okay. uh, these guys are cool because, uh, you know, as you can see, they, they look really nice, nice and bright. They're also yeah. a filter feeder uh, known as a bivalve. So they'll have a little tube that'll stick out.